Hello everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max and that smooth camera moment you just experienced was because of my colleague and friend behind the camera, Jordan, uh, who's filming me today. I'm in his garage and we're talking about electric vehicles of all kinds, motorcycles, cars, and charging them because there are three different ways you can charge really most electric cars or bikes or uh, kinds of vehicles. This bike you can charge two ways, this car you can charge three ways. So we're gonna tell you about the three most common ways you're gonna charge any of them, what a kilowatt hour is in terms of energy, what charging speed means. So if these are all new topics to you, this is the perfect video, uh, let's get into it. All right, Jordan, you're pointing at a wall outlet and I just wanna get this right off the bat, we'll talk about this, but charging your bike or even my car can be just as simple as plugging into a wall for an electric car. It's really that simple. Uh, these vehicles, right, want electricity and it's not the fastest way to charge, but you can do it. So let's talk about that. But before we get into charging speed, Jordan, we get to talk about energy. How do we measure energy in electric stuff like this? Yeah, so I guess, for example, this bike is 14 kilowatt hours. A car like yours is 78 kilowatt hours. Uh, a kilowatt hour, that's you know burning a thousand watts in an hour type of thing. It's, it's, a, it's a unit of energy storage. So an outlet like this, an EMA either 515 or 520, is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah, um, which is basically the amperage. Um, this one in particular is a 520. Um, so it can support the 20 amps. Um, it's actually on a 50 amp circuit. Uh, actually, yeah, I think it's 50 amp circuit in this house. Um, so it's kind of a new house. Uh, when I had it built, I also had the NEMA 1450 installed. We'll get to that later. This is all about what we call level one. So in typical American fashion, uh, this will do up to about one, one and a half kilowatt uh, charging speed. What does that translate to, Jordan? So a bike like this, uh, a little bit over 14 kilowatt hours, that's around 10 hours. So you can think about it that way pretty easily. If it's a one kilowatt charging speed in 10 hours, you'll get 10 kilowatts. So uh, to kilowatt, 10 hours kilowatt hours of energy, yeah. Yes. So something like this bike on a level one outlet, zero to full, overnight. Um, but on a car, it's what we consider a trickle charge, if you will. This will charge it much slower because of the percentage of the battery that 10 kilowatt hours is actually doing. So on a car overnight, this might be 10 or 15 percent, which is still usable. Some people commute, I mean, five or 10 miles to work. Um, it really just depends. Even in my case, I could actually do most of my work commute if I was just trickle charging like a Model 3 up from my house. So I do wanna say that level one is not useless. If you're buying an EV, you don't necessarily need a level two charger, especially with things like, what do you say, public infrastructure. Yes, which you know is a mixed thing, of course, depending on where you live, but could be a factor. Uh, you're probably familiar if you're considering an electric car with seeing public chargers around charge points, clipper creeks, those special you know parking spots you see at businesses that say EV charging. Usually, those are what we're going to get into called level two charging. So, right, level one to recap is this wall outlet. Yeah, level one, fine. Level two, better. Yeah, especially for cars like this 78 kilowatt hour battery, which is what like. Uh, five to six times the battery in your bike, Jordan. Of course, it would take a lot longer. Charging a Model 3 or a vehicle like this Polestar can take easily over two full days on a level one outlet. So like you said, absolutely doable for some people if they actually don't drive that much, because consider, right, um, I get a little more range than your bike, but not as much as the battery would suggest because it's less efficient. Nonetheless, with my roughly 80 kilowatt hour battery, 200 miles of range in this, I'm not actually using that every day. So I could theoretically, if I wasn't driving that much, just get by with that. But then Jordan, level two, let's finally get into it. What is level two charging? So that's typically a, a higher amperage limit and that can push more power to your car. Um, a common, I guess, misconception is that you have a, a vehicle charger like this thing in your trunk right here. This is not actually a charger. It's technically an electric vehicle supply equipment, EVSE. Um, I will say the nomenclature I don't think is a huge deal. Our friend Tom Malongny over at State of Charge, check out the YouTube channel, he's given up on correcting people because well, we just refer to them as chargers. Um, technically speaking, the charger is on board. It's on the car. But this is what feeds the bigger amount of power to the car. And in America, that's usually done through the J1772 plug. Of course, Teslas have their own uh, plug version, but in ACS. This is the J7072, which is kind of the industry standard for non-Teslas in the US. So you have this giant NEMA 1450 connector, which plugs right in over here. We can even show you. And that's the higher voltage 
connection, which makes it level to 240 volts typically. Uh, and it doesn't have to be hardwired, we should mention too, because a lot of, or sorry, it doesn't have to be plugged in like that. A lot of more permanent installations in homes are hardwired. What you just took out of my Polestar, Jordan, is what's called a portable right charger or EVSC technically, if we're being correct. Yeah. Um, and the cool thing about what you mentioned, the technicality, we don't have to get too nerdy about this, but the charger being on board the car, that's actually the complicated part. This piece of equipment, not to say it's trivial, is actually pretty simple. And as a result, Jordan, that came with my vehicle, but even if it didn't, I could get one of those with either a Tesla or this terminal, whatever I need for my car. I could get one of those on Amazon, a good one for 200 to at most like $300. Yeah, and sometimes there's adapters. I mean, my friend Logan uh, has a Tesla Roadster and a Taycan, neither of which use the Tesla connector. And he has a Tesla connector in his garage using an adapter. Yeah, That's one way to do it. Um, but yeah, there, there's ways to hardwire them and then also lots of portable EVSEs, which is nice if you are traveling, say, around the country, you go to a friend's house who has one of these connectors. Max comes over sometimes. That's, you're that friend in my life. I'm that Always friend. Max comes garage. over to upload videos on my gigabit in, 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 internet and then uh, charges into my electricity. I'm using all your infrastructure. <laughs> and I made a video actually with my girlfriend, Jordan, about why people are traveling with EVs on a road trip. So you need one of these. You hopefully don't want to use it, but if you have to, it's a really good backup to have. But the more permanent version of these is still level two. It's not going to be that socket you just showed. It may be hardwired in your house, or it may be that socket that's up to your electrician the way you want to install it. But the long and short of it, Jordan, is it's what twice the voltage and significantly more amps than that level one we were talking about. Yeah, which means much quicker charging. On your car, what do you think level two charging, if you had to say zero to full is? Uh, zero to full in my car, it would be, I think, seven to eight hours if uh, maximizing the charge speed. Of course, this depends because many vehicles that have a charge speed in excess of like nine kilowatts, not everyone has the breaker for that. You mentioned, like, I think, something about like a 50 amp uh, breaker unit, which means safely you could uh, run 40 amps continuously. And yeah. uh, if all these numbers are eluding you, I actually did a video with State of Charge, Tom Malogny. You can check out in the info card if you want to learn more about specifically how you install a level two charger in your home. We don't need to get too into the weeds but the long and short of it is level two speeds are more dependent than level one because not everyone's home has the same like exact specification. Like you said, your house is newer, so it has a little bit of a higher limit. But even on your charger, Jordan, which is like 40 amps, uh, that's gonna be fine for my car continuously seven to eight hours and your bike I'm sure is much quicker. Yeah, a lot of times uh, with, with car or with level two in general, it's it's six kilowatts is what you can commonly see. Of course it can be higher. Uh, these bikes can even be equipped with additional onboard chargers to up it to like 10 kilowatts. So that's pretty impressive. Um, of course in Europe with the type two ports, it is better. And so I'm, we're kind of jealous of their circuitry sometimes, but that six ish kilowatts is for sure better than the, uh, the one point something that you'll see. Yeah, we're talking one. minimum of like three and a half to four times better. And potentially in level two, you mentioned Europe, uh, countries and places with three phase power could potentially get up to 20 kilowatt charge speed. Meaning I could charge my Polestar two if it had an onboard charger to support it, which it doesn't. But if it did in like three hours, almost or a little you could over go to a coffee hours. shop watch Avengers 3 and it'll be like zero to full in that time that's yeah it's pretty impressive so level two it's kind of com confusing right because we got over level one that's really mostly the same right level two is such a broad range of six uh, to 22 you know kilowatts depending the most common I think is going to be probably 7 to 11 kilowatts for most people's households the level 2 striation of charge capability is kind of all over the place within the 5 to 15 kilowatt range or up to 20 like you said in Europe whereas level 1 is pretty much that exact thing. Um, many vehicles can detect the charge that's going into them. Like your Polestar, you can kind of monitor how much energy it's receiving. The bike's not. I can't even set a charge limit on this thing. Now, Zero does have a big enough buffer in it to, to not really worry, but that's why I have a smart outlet that actually control or sees the amount of voltage and controls that I can turn it off after a certain amount of kilowatt hours has been dispensed and such. Mm -hmm. So there's various ways you can do home charging without having a full on level two or EVSE. But, I, and I wanna mention that for, for people who are concerned. Like a lot of friends ask me, is it okay if I buy an EV if these are my conditions? And usually I'm like, yes, if you like want an EV hard enough, you can make it work. Even if you have, like I had a neighbor in Boulder who had a level three or a model three street parked. Every night he ran extension cord out from his house, plugged it in, probably got 15% overnight. It just depends. Like I have friends yeah. who work from home a lot and they don't really drive that far. And I'm like, yeah, have a model Y. 
you can charge it. They have a garage, level one outlet. I was like, you'll be fine. But yeah. the efficiency between these two is different. Yeah, big reason to consider if someone's shopping for vehicles based off their feasibility and home charging is looking difficult. Like you would much rather want, like you said, Jordan, a Model Y over say an Audi e-tron uh, because the Model <laughs> Y is substantially more efficient, meaning that even though it's you know getting the same energy as the e-tron would on your potentially you know trickle charging situation, that same amount of energy takes it way further, which is why Jordan, your bike with uh, almost one sixth uh, of the energy of my car makes it three quarters of the range of my car. It's just a lot more efficient, it's lighter, it's smaller. Yeah, exactly. So there, there's a lot of ways to do it. And something huge, like I had Kyle's Rivian out in Canyon City, where there is one level two charger and it's a shared five kilowatt. Oh no. And that's rough. Uh, so I was like, oh, I'll just park. I was parked at my uh, in-laws or uh, brother-in-law's cabin and I level one charges it for like three days. Almost nothing happened. It was an old, like really inefficient level one charger. And like the trickle charge on a Rivian, which has over a hundred kilowatt hours is just, it's rough. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point to mention. Uh, both, both level one, and le but especially level one, which is you know more basic on those wall outlets, some buildings and some sites won't actually be able to provide clean, continuous power to the degree that a vehicle wants it. Uh, in which case, even your trickle charge can go out the window. For most of you with modern homes and not using uh, shared dilapidated rural infrastructure, then that's not <laughs> the case. But, you know, of course, it actually could be an issue, like you mentioned, in Canyon City. Um, super interesting. Now, Jordan, there is an even faster way. This won't apply to your bike. It applies to some motorcycles. But we're let's talk about the big boy of charging. Uh, the, well, some people call it level three. There's technically no such thing as level three. It's I'm, called DC fast charging. DC fast charging. I have the same kind of hot take that Tom has about EVFC. I don't care if it's called level three because I think that's easier for the general public to understand. Um, and I, I get the arguments like we need to have different striations with DC fast charging because DC fast charging can mean 50 kilowatt or 500 kilowatt. I mean, it's kind of all over the place. But it's fast, Jordan. But it's fast. Yeah. So it's not a lie. But that is what will charge Max's car fast enough to go on a road trip. Uh, for example, and yep. that's that's really that is another way you can make a, an electric car work if you don't even have a means to charge at home, not even an extension cord. Yes, it's just public level two or public DC fast charging. Think yes. of it like stopping for gas, but a little bit longer. Yeah, basically it's it's the closest to that gas model. And to be honest, it's I'll put this last in the video because. To, for most daily users, it shouldn't be the most relevant consideration, but a lot of buyers, Jordan, right, they think about an EV in that mindset of gas, so they're always thinking about fast charging. So especially if they're not considering a Tesla with Tesla's famously really good superchargers, they're worried about the public charging experience at DC fast chargers. It's a legitimate concern. We've shown it across the out of spec channels, uh, but it's not something that everyone has to do all the time. However, like you said, in a road trip situation, it's realistic what you'll be doing. I like the fact that my Polestar has no Tesla connector because Tesla connector is actually, I think, a better connector, Jordan. But for illustration purposes, this shows better the differences because if you look at this, right, this is level one or level two, where the, the ones that we talked about in the, uh, with level one and two, these have been AC up until now, right? AC charging. When we say DC fast charging, it's not only fast, it's DC. So without getting too technical, direct current into the battery, you're bypassing the car's onboard charger, and you're charging it, like you said, speeds in excess of 50 kilowatts, potentially 350 kilowatts on the right vehicle. For most vehicles, I think they peak somewhere around 100 to 200 kilowatts, somewhere in between there. But um, again, for reference here, like what is 150 kilowatts in charging speed, Jordan? Like I can charge my car almost from dead in 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, and we're really at that place in the market where I want to say if we see close to 200 kilowatts on a car, we're like that's good DC fast charging, and when we see low 100s, we're like that's pretty poor DC fast charging. But of course, it depends on battery size. Depends Smaller on batteries, it's more acceptable to have it be a little lower. And you know, you're charging it right now over level two. We know this is level two. If you're curious, if you're using someone's house or public, I mean, if someone's house is almost certainly level two. But if you're using public infrastructure and it's this cable and you're not using uh, the two pins below it, then it's probably AC. So Jordan, if we unplug my car, you can see the difference. This is only applicable on non-Teslas, but these are the pins for DCs. Teslas also use a different, like when they use DC, they charge differently, but their cable looks so clean that it looks the same no matter what. These are like integrated into this thing basically. Uh, but this works for illustration purposes to see that like this 
is level one or two. If you're using this big boy and you have a chunkier handle, usually, because this equipment is- Too chunky. Heavier duty, yeah, probably too <laughs> big, to be honest. Then you're doing the DC fast charge. Yeah, so there's so many ways to, to charge your vehicles. I, I think there's enough ways and enough public infrastructure that I don't worry about it as much, but it is still a concern for a lot of people. That's still a valid concern because we still are in this, I feel like I'm throwing this thing around. We still are in this season where public infrastructure is not as good as it could be or should be, but we're getting to that point. I mean, I, have, I do have level two charging at work, which is awesome. I actually fill my bike up once a week at work. It yeah. takes like an hour and a half and I'm full. Yeah. But I have one charger at work with two plugs on it. It's a shared charge point charger. And one plug was broken for about three months. And the other plug was commonly taken up by a leaf who was full charging every single day for about four hours. So you can't always rely on, even though you're like, oh, there's a charger there. Is it open? I don't know. So yeah. it is definitely a weight off if you have a means to charge at home. Sure. Yeah. And if there's one thing we can stress, I think with our time spent talking about level one, level two, like you were saying, Jordan, the way you should live, be living with an EV is ideally not DC fast charging all the time because you're reliant on infrastructure that isn't the garage of you, your friends, the people you love, the people who are close to you, you know, <laughs> uh, ultimately, aren't we just better off when we're charging slower and not caring as much? Yeah. And that's really the point we want to drive home is that even if you don't have level two in your garage, level one can be good for a lot of people. Uh, and both are good options to charge many EVs. Just depends on your range, how much you're using your car. If you have a hundred mile commute, yeah, level one may not work for you, but uh, there are a lot of ways to charge your cars. And this is hopefully a pretty good basic level of here's the three main charging standards and kind of what they cover. But if you have questions, throw those in the comments and we'll try to answer them. Yeah, we covered a lot of ground. So if you have questions, absolutely do that. Thanks so much for joining me in this one, Jordan. And uh, your bike is probably, uh, what is it uh, charge wise now? Uh, probably about 80, yeah. So. Okay, well, I'm assuming you're gonna go for a ride now. Put a lid on it, let's go. <laughs>